Welcome to the Hall of OBS. Um, howdy. I decided I'd make a quick teardown video of the uh, Adder workstation. Um, this was mostly born out of necessity because I needed to take it apart. Um, I've done this a couple times now, and every time I forget a few things and it drives me crazy. So I thought this time I would uh, record the process. Um, really quickly, uh, before I do disassemble everything here. thought I'd show you around the system working just a little bit because this really is a great machine in spite of some of the uh, frustrations I run into every time I tear it down. Um, so quick uh, Neo fetch here just to show you what I got going on here. This is Pop OS 2104 on the Adder workstation. Um, this is a pretty beefy machine. It's got a GeForce RTX 2070 uh, that's cut a compliance so you can do some fun ML stuff on here got about 32 gigabytes of RAM I think I've got about two terabytes of hard disk installed on this machine um, Intel i7 um, as you might guess from these specs it is not a great machine for battery life uh, it is a great machine for getting work done this is more of um, more of like a luggable machine. As you'll see when I start tearing it down, it's, it's pretty bulky, um, but it's great if what you want is a desktop, um, essentially, that you can take to the coffee shop occasionally or, or sit on the patio with, which is pretty much what I do a lot of. Um, show you here, it's it's got pretty good performance. I use it for playing around with a blender and things like that, and um, does pretty good Good job at such things. Um, fairly good uh, render times and cycles and EV. Um, I'm not a blender guru or anything. I just kind of do this for fun in my spare time. So this was a scene I was actually working on this morning. I thought I'd pull up here. I've got way more complex scenes um, that this thing chews through equally well. Um, does a pretty good job at that. Don't have any great examples of, but I have um, done a fair bit of uh, machine learning stuff, both just tearing through examples for work as well as, um, I mean, tearing through examples for learning as well as a few uh, minor um, work projects and things on this, and it's done a pretty good job with them. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, move on to taking this beast apart to figure out why it's making a strange uh, sound of late. I'm going to make a couple of quick observations about disassembling the System76 Adder workstation that uh, don't appear to be in their instructions that are good to know. Um, where I always run into trouble is disconnecting this printer ribbon here, which it seems like you have to do to get to a lot of the um, internal parts of this. I'd say that's like my one complaint about this system is how inaccessible a lot of the parts are. Um, if like me, you don't disconnect such things very often, you may not know how that works. Um, it's a little easier to see on a Raspberry Pi, so what I always do to kind of try to remind myself is to play with these things on a Raspberry Pi first to try to um, get a sense of how it works before I break my $3,000 plus dollar machine here. Um, so what's maybe not entirely clear to see even on the Pi, though it's a lot easier to see on the Pi than it is on the uh, System76 board, is that this black part here of the ribbon cable connector lifts up and down. And what you want to do is to have that up to remove or insert the cable, and then once you have it in place to push it down. Um, I'm going to attempt to do that on the real thing now, but I don't think I can do it while holding this phone. But I believe it has a very similar mechanism here, if you can see that. Just even tinier and harder for my clumsy hands to work with. Yes, confirmation. Could not do that quite while holding this, but in fact, you might be able to see now. It's very similar. It doesn't quite lift straight up and down, but it kind of flips up from one end. And with that up, you can now remove this cable. What I don't recommend is just simply trying to rip the cable out of there, thinking that it slides straight in and out, um, like I did the first time I tried to do this. 
Just a little further explanation. The reason you often have to take this keyboard off is that in addition to all the bottom screws, there are these two little screws here under the keyboard. Um, right now, this little guy is the last little thing holding me back. Um, another thing you'll find with this computer is that the screws are all very recessed. This is actually much less recessed than the bottom screws. That means you'll do a lot of turning and then flipping the computer and shaking um, to see if you've actually got the screws loose or not and if they'll come out. This one right here seems to be magnetized or something because I can't seem to get it any looser, but for whatever reason, it does not want to come out of that hole. Um, it seems to be stuck down in that little recess. Um, but once you have all those out, you should be able to flip it and then start to pry up the bottom. I also don't love the fact you have to kind of pry apart the plastic. Um, final note here, thing that um, really got me the first time I tried to do this is figuring out there's a couple of these keyboard screws and the instruction said to um, push a screwdriver into this keyboard screw in order to pop the keyboard out um, so you can initially get it free. At first wasn't really sure if that meant this hole or this hole. Um, I can now confirm does definitely mean this one here right below this um i guess these are so the speaker or the gpu there um it's it's that hole that you want to use and um another good trick is if you have one of these handy or something like that i don't even know what this is actually really used for but this little guy seems to be the best way to do that if you actually get something long enough and thin enough it should actually be obvious when it's working that's what I wasn't sure of before, having never done this. How do I know if it's working or if I'm just pushing too hard or if I'm going to break something? Um, the screwdriver that I typically use to take screws out of things like this, it's not actually long enough to get down in there because, again, these holes are very recessed and um, the edges of the screwdriver and stuff were um, stopping it on the plastic before it could actually get deep enough to push on the keyboard. So trick was to find this. Once you find that, you'll immediately feel it start to come loose. From there, you pry from the top, get the top up, and then the bottom just slides right off. Um, easy peasy, I guess. Well, and look at that. Um, while I had this flipped over showing that, my final screw finally decided to, uh, pop out of that little hole. Um, not sure why it wouldn't come out before, but, uh, Funny enough, this is really the reason I'm taking this apart again. I hope there's not a loose screw in there, but um, ever since I took this apart the first time in order to add an additional um, SSD hard drive, um, I've had some intermittent noises when the fan spins up that almost sounds like uh, something's rattling around in there and uh, kind of disturbs me. I've sat on it for a while and sometimes it disappears, but it came back this morning with a vengeance, so I'm little concerned that um, something is loose in there, or like maybe a screw. I'm thinking probably not something so big. It sounds more like a wrapper or a leaf. I don't know how that would have gotten in there, but popping this guy open to see if there's something visible inside besides all the dust that you can see really clearly on this camera. Um, yeah, I don't know. Perhaps we need to dust more in this house. I'll continue to make some notes here as I try to do this. Um, Another thing to be careful of is holding on to these fins here as you try to pry from the hinge. These things seem to be pretty delicate. I don't think I've uh, snapped any of them off of here yet, but honestly, this little guy feels looser than it did before. Um, you gotta be really careful with holding on to that. In fact, honestly, I'm suspicious that what I'm hearing is actually not necessarily something loose in there, but possibly, as I mentioned, these screws are recessed. When taking it apart, I noticed um, some of these screws weren't actually screwed in there very good, so it may have been a screw vibrating. Or it may also, in fact, be one of these um, fins here. In particular, this guy feels a little loose. It may be one of these things vibrating. But uh, that's another thing to be aware of, because you, you have to pry from around these hinges here. It wasn't clear to me the first time what around the hinge meant, so I think the first time I started trying to pry about here, that's not what you want to do. It's more like this corner here. Um, I still haven't successfully gotten it removed yet this time, but I think that's where you start. Um, we'll see once we get it going. 
slight bit more progress if you can see this. So it kind of helps to start at this corner here. And then the vent itself does come off. Like I said, don't try not to touch this middle vent here, the middle fan, fan or whatever you want to call that little guy. But this bottom top one does come off, but it does feel pretty delicate. So you kind of be careful with that. From there, I think we're making progress. The other side still feels pretty stuck, but I think it's going to come soon. Um, so I'm going to keep working my way around this. We have success, by the way. So once you finally get that, this whole bit here lifts off. And you can now see the inside of the System 76 here. Um, which really is a great machine, except for this part about how hard it is to disassemble. Over here is where in the past I added an additional uh, SSD drive. That's all still in there and nice. One of these days I should up the RAM. But for now, I'm just looking to see what the source of this uh, extraneous noise I occasionally hear is. Um, for better or for worse, I'm not seeing too much weird in here, but I'm gonna poke around a bit. So far, my two theories are one, the loose screw theory, or two, the loose plastic theory. This little guy here does seem to move a bit, it wants to lift up a bit and pull away from this. I'm not sure if that's meant to snap away like that or if the plastic has just snapped, but I think that might be what I'm hearing is this uh, bit of plastic here vibrating which probably doesn't hurt anything, but it's, it's a little annoying. Um, given the cost of this machine, some of these little build quality issues like this are a little unfortunate. Um, like I said, still a, a good machine overall. Performance is great and it does what it's supposed to do, but I, I suspect, yeah, I suspect that's exactly what I'm hearing is this plastic moving around here when the GPU is going at full tilt. The next bit of fun is putting everything back together and hopefully not having too much pieces left over. I will say another note on these ribbons here. I believe I've now got got these guys incorrectly right here. Um, but what you will notice when you're putting them back in is it does have to slide in a little bit before you flip that piece back down. Um, I think it's in there snug now. It doesn't want to pull back out, so hopefully that's good and my keyboard works when I start all this back up. Um, but we will see. Um, hardware hacking is definitely not my thing. I love this machine when it's not taken apart. One thing that is not too hard to replace on this laptop, which is good, is the battery. It's not quite as nice as the good old days where batteries could just be like popped in and out in flight with the flick of a switch. There are some screws, but you don't have to do any of that other stuff to do it. And it is a replaceable battery, which is one you can say for most laptops. Um, unfortunately, I may need to replace this battery before too long because the battery in this machine has not held up very well. Um, in fairness, I am not the best battery user. I tend to buy laptops, but use them like desktops, meaning I just leave them plugged in all the time and 100% charged. That is not good for the life of these batteries. I need to play with um, something like, I believe it's called NTP. I don't know. I know there's some software that's supposed to help with this problem. Moment of truth, see if it powers on. Okay. This camera really reveals the dust. Oh, you see the nice uh, keyboard lights flashing on there. That's a promising sign that I haven't uh, totally reconnected the uh, keyboard incorrectly. Oh, we have we have our um, decryption prompt. Hey, one step farther. Do we get pop? We got pop. Looking promising. All right, we're now booted back into pop. And uh, like I said, this machine really is a pretty lovely machine if what you want is um, kind of a um, 
semi-portable um, power workstation. It's not going to make you happy if your stick is lightweight and long battery life, but what I really wanted was a uh, desktop machine. I could run things like Blender and machine learning models, but that I could at least lug to the coffee shop or uh, work in the backyard with. It's been pretty great for that. Um, Minus said weird sound that it doesn't seem to be making right now. <laughs>